Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this video is about where to start with reading the Sherlock Holmes series by Arthur Conan Doyle. I'll begin with an overview over the Sherlock Holmes canon and then recommend some stories that are great to begin with. When people talk about the Sherlock Holmes canon, they usually mean the stories that were published in four novels and five short story collections between 1887 and 1927. Doyle wrote these stories for four decades and while we like to think of Sherlock Holmes as an exclusively Victorian character, the majority of the books were actually published in the 20th century. The reason why we think of Sherlock Holmes as Victorian is because many of the stories written in the 20th century are set in the late 19th century. Almost all of the stories, uh, both the novels and the short stories, are narrated from the perspective of Dr. Watson, an ex-army doctor who meets and moves in with private detective Sherlock Holmes. Watsons then writes about their adventures solving cases, some criminal, some just curious, some with the help of the police and some without. Holmes is an incredibly talented detective who relies on his extraordinary powers of observation to solve tricky criminal cases. Watson, while much less intellectually gifted, is a quick thinker and usually brings his revolver when things get dangerous. Basically, Holmes is a Ravenclaw, Watson's a Gryffindor. These two characters and their home of 221B Baker Street are so iconic that I don't even know how much I need to explain even to a complete Sherlock Holmes novice. So instead, let me tell you what I personally love about these stories. The cases are not meant to be solved by the reader. Because we see everything from Watson's perspective and he is nowhere near as perceptive and deductive as Holmes, we don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. So when the big reveal happens at the end of the story, we're as much in awe of Sherlock Holmes' amazing abilities as Watson is. That being said, there are some cases where Doyle could have been a bit more original in his plotting and where the solution is glaringly obvious. But my point is, the puzzle aspect is not the most interesting parts of these stories, which makes them all very rereadable. What draws me to them is always the characters of Holmes and Watson's and the curious adventures they go on together. Some stories are set almost entirely in the sitting room of Baker Street, whereas in others the two detectives travel to other parts of London or to the British countryside or even abroad. Now let me tell you a bit more about the canon and recommend the stories that I find most suited for people who have never read Sherlock Holmes before. There are four novels about Sherlock Holmes. The very first one is called A Study in Scarlet and that's the one in which we are introduced to the two main characters. It's also the story in which they meet, move in together and start solving crimes together. The book is split into halves. The first is about the meeting of Holmes and Watson in London and about how they get involved with the murder case. And the second is about the backstory of the criminal and is set in faraway Utah. This very first novel has a lot of features which will become common tropes throughout the Holmes canon. For example, we learn about how Sherlock Holmes manages to figure out the most amazing things about a person just by observing tiny details like the dirt on their shoe or their stitching on the top hat. The first meeting of Holmes and Watson is one of my favourite parts of this novel and something that would make it very suitable for a first Sherlock Holmes read, were it not for the split narrative with the second half set before the events of the first half. This, for me, makes the book completely unsuitable as a first read. The second half is long and dreary and nowhere near as fun and interesting as the first. Like I said before, this part is set in Utah and it involves Mormons, and I can only imagine that in 1887 that would have had some exotic appeal to the British audiences. Instead, if you're a first-time Sherlock Holmes reader, I would skip straight to the third novel, The Hound of the Baskervilles. This one's from 1901 and it's probably the most famous of his novels. This story takes Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson out to the misty Dartmoor countryside where they try and solve the riddle of a centuries-old curse of a hellhound murdering members of an ancient family. They do this in order to assist the latest heir to the Baskerville family estate, a young American who calls upon them 
to solve this case. There are several plot lines and strands of inquiry all intertwined and all of this is set against this really atmospheric background of the moor. This novel has a wonderfully mysterious setting and the riddle of the ancient curse, the murderous hound and the side plot of an escaped convict hiding out in the wilderness all make for a really compelling story. The Hound of the Baskervilles is the perfect place to start with Sherlock Holmes because if you don't like that, you're probably not going to enjoy the rest of the canon. However, if you don't want to commit to a whole novel, as a second option, I would recommend starting with the very first collection of short stories titled The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The first story is called A Scandal in Bohemia and is probably the most famous since it concerns the infamous opera singer Irene Adler. This is a short mystery that sets up the dynamics between Holmes and Watson very nicely and gives a good idea of how their adventures usually unfold. I would recommend that and the rest of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes if you're interested in trying out some Sherlock Holmes but don't want to commit to a whole novel. Once you've read either or both The Hound of the Baskervilles and The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, you can either continue with another novel or another short story collection. For the short stories, I would recommend reading them in chronological order. So next up would be The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes and then The Return of Sherlock Holmes. If you want to continue with another novel, I would next pick up A Study in Scarlet, bearing in mind the flaws I mentioned earlier. There are two more novels, one titled The Sign of the Four, which is the story in which Watson has a bit of a romance plot, but which is also possibly the most horribly racist Holmes story ever. Would not recommend until you've read everything else. The other novel, The Valley of Fear, reads similarly to A Study in Scarlet, where Holmes and Watson solve the case in the first half of the book, and then we get some backstory set in America in the second half of the book. Apart from The Hounds of the Baskervilles, which I think is a true masterpiece, I find the short stories much more charming and enjoyable than the novels, especially the first three collections, so be prepared for that. Maybe the format of the detective story just works better within the shorter confines of a story rather than a full-length novel. Recently, my favourite way to rediscover these stories has been through the audiobooks narrated by Stephen Fry. He recorded the entire canon for Audible, where you can download all 72 hours for a single credit. Pro tip, if you're not signed up to Audible yet, uh, you can make an account and then they give you a free credit that you can then use to spend on this Sherlock Holmes collection. Then if you want, you can cancel your account after a month again, but you'll still have um, that download. Stephen Fry's narration is amazing. It really brings these stories to life. He does a fantastic Watson. Obviously Watson is the character who narrates most of these stories, not quite all of them. And Stephen Fry does such a good job at reading them. I really hope in this video I made you at least a bit curious about the Sherlock Holmes canon. Sherlock Holmes is such an iconic character and I'm sure even if you've never opened one of the original books, you have come across one of the many adaptations and variations on his stories. Before I go, I want to recommend another video by Summer Dawn on Sherlock Holmes as a character and how he has been portrayed in various adaptations. She compares different versions of the characters and then ranks them based on authenticity to the book. You can find that linked in the description box, but be aware that it does contain spoilers. Let me know if you're a Holmes fan, which of his stories you would recommend to new readers and which are your favourite stories. I think I have made abundantly clear that The Hound of the Baskervilles has a very special place in my heart. And if you only ever read one Sherlock Holmes story, make it this one. Thank you for watching. Bye.